Here's Brody Brazil. Well, this is something I had no clue about, was not even aware of until a couple days ago, but I thought it was super important and relevant enough to make a video and share with you here on YouTube. And that is the potential tarnishing of Fenway Park and most specifically of the Green Monster. And by the way, have you noticed yet that font color right there for Green Monster? It is Fenway Green. I love it. It's iconic. It's distinctive. It really says Fenway Park. I mean, yeah, it's not even a Red Sox color. It's a Fenway Park color. And I hope it never changes. When I see it, I instantly know what that is. Fenway Park. So let's get to this Green Monster situation and what might be causing some changes. It's all about the Fenway Corners project, which has already been approved. And that's an interesting element here. It's a $1.6 billion project in association with the Fenway Sports Group. So this is not something that the Red Sox themselves are detached from, out of their control. They are very much a part of what's happening here. It's a project with eight new buildings, five new acres of space, 200 new housing units, 40 retail locations, streets and sidewalks to be improved, all the way around Fenway Park. And when I say it like that, it's a good thing, right? Sounds like a good thing. And I think that area has always been fine, probably could use some upgrades, some new elements, some new architecture. And yeah, when you see these renderings, there's nothing wrong with it. They're not doing something completely modern to contrast as an eyesore with the 1910s era Fenway Park. Nobody really has any objections to these renderings. And by the way, all of this is with the understanding that they've already upgraded Fenway Park in recent decades to a certain degree. And they've always had to upkeep it, but they've done some major projects on the monster itself, out in Wright Field. So this is not to alter the ballpark at all. This is really the surrounding neighborhoods. And again, as I, I show you these pictures, and that might be the most modern structure of them all, of the four renderings that were released here, nobody's really got a problem with anything that you've seen so far. It's this image right here is what caught people's attention. Now, yeah, there's obviously some buildup as you look past the third base side, past the left field area. And there's obviously some other, you know, new structures and buildings around the ballpark. But most specifically, what's caught everybody's eye is, yeah, when you zoom in right there past the green monster on Lansdowne Street, that's a brand new building of what looks to be one, two, three, four, five, six or seven stories. Now, the monster is 37 feet. So a four-story building is going to be pretty much at the same height, if not a little bit taller than the monster itself with those, those new seats atop it. But that looks to be a couple stories above it. And that means you would see that building from inside the ballpark. And the famous shot of a baseball going over the monster, across Lansdowne Street, into the parking lot that's, that sat out there, or hitting some of those old warehouse buildings. Sure, I understand. You could do a lot more than they currently provide. But to put something that big, that new, and that hard to miss, it's going to forever change the imagery and the landscape of Fenway Park. I totally understand how people saw that, how people instantly aren't a fan of that. That changes the look of the green monster and of this ballpark. And just to give you perspective, I didn't have a really good photo of this. So what you're seeing here is a rendering from Google Earth. It's also taking place, I guess, during the off season when there was a concert going on there. So it doesn't give you the full feel of a, of a baseball season. But look, that is what is currently past the green monster right now. A lot of open space, a lot of open area. There's Lansdowne Street, there's some train tracks, there's some buildings beyond that. The famous Sitco sign, right? You can see all of that now from the ballpark. But can you see it? Would you be able to see it if that brand new building were there? And again, this is not to really critique any of the other structures around the ballpark or the improvements in open space and new sidewalks and new pedestrian areas. All that is great. This one building, to me, is a huge red flag. It's a huge holdup in all of this. So here are my Fenway takeaways. Yes, of course, in Fenway green at the top. Nothing wrong with 99% of this project. 
They want to do it. They want to move forward on it. They want to improve the area around Fenway, not actually touch the ballpark itself. Fine. But you really have to be careful of Trojan horses in situations like these. What do I mean by that? When you push an entire package of things through and then you fit the one part that nobody's really hot on and there will be some pushback on it, some fight on it, but you slide it in there and you try and hide it with something that everybody else really likes. You push that Trojan horse through the gate. What's inside the Trojan horse is to be, is to be careful of. So you got to be careful of everything that comes along with this project. I would also say that there's no going back on construction. We've already talked about the project being approved. And look, renderings are renderings. Maybe there's a way to make that building shorter than the monster. Maybe that that rendering is just not accurate. We know how that goes. Maybe it's you know ab- below the fence line, so to speak. So you wouldn't see it from inside the ballpark. If that's the case, what more can we say? Right? It doesn't aesthetically change the appearance inside the ballpark. If it towers over the monster, now I think we've got a conversation. But there's no going back once that starts, once that process begins. That's why this is important to tackle right now and figure out right now. Last part of this, it's a forever fight. This ballpark has been around since the early 1910s and for years, it's been you know, discussed being replaced or modernized or wiped out or all these different things. Like I said, they put so much effort and money into it in recent decades to improve it, especially in the 2000s and 2010s. Now, to me, it's guaranteed that it's going to last many more decades, but you still have to protect what's around it, the experience to a certain degree. I get it. Change is inevitable and you can't say no to everything. But some stuff like this, it is going to be a forever fight to protect the integrity of the ballpark, things of that nature. So there you go. I'm not saying, even if that gets built, would it entirely ruin Fenway Park? No, there's a lot of good things to it still. But that view, I mean, that gives you the perspective right there. Look beyond the monster right there. Parking lots, open space. Not a gigantic office building, a modern looking building, which peers back into the ballpark. I don't think anybody really wants to see that. And hopefully it doesn't happen. So let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below. Uh, You made it here to the end of the video, which I appreciate. Thumbs up down below on that. And also, don't forget, subscribe to this channel so that I can definitely see you back here next time.